Jeff, I got to say, early February isn't the most ideal time for a walk in this remote section of Gloucester, Rhode Island. No, I get that. But this time of year does give us one advantage in the woods. What's that? Well, with no foliage, we can see a pretty good distance among all the trees on either side of the road. Oh, that's true. So I take it we're looking for something in the woods? We are, Ray. And from what I've heard, this creature's hard to miss. We're here in Rhode Island, right near the Connecticut border, searching for the burning beast of Gloucester. Hello, I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 233 of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. And I'm Ray Osher. Thanks for joining us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England one story at a time. We appreciate you being here with us as we search for monsters, ghosts, and things to go bump in the night. Please be sure to subscribe to our podcast if you don't already, because it's free, and we don't want you to miss a thing. Also... Tell a friend or two about us. Post your favorite episodes to your social media. It goes a long way in helping our community grow. Now, before we go looking for the burning beast of Gloucester, Rhode Island, we want to take just a minute to tell you about our sponsor, Nuwadi Herbals. We just had a doozy of a snowstorm last week. Man, did we ever. And after hours of shoveling almost two feet of snow, my back was killing me. Then I'm glad Kimberly from Nuwadi Herbals is here to help us. Kimberly, what would you recommend for our sore shoveling muscles? Indian Blanket Balm is a terrific blend of ingredients. The cinnamon, clove, ginger, and cayenne are in there to provide a little heat and circulation. The camphor and menthol help with penetration. And the white willow bark is a natural aspirin to help provide more comfort. It's like a warm Indian blanket surrounding your body. Oh, that sounds perfect. Winter is a time when I feel like we need to work a little bit harder to stay healthy. So I'm drinking extra water and taking care of my insides as well. I've been taking afternoon tea breaks with healer tea from Nuwadi Herbals. Helps keep my immune system up and keeps me feeling great in these cold months. Let Nuwadi Herbals help support your healthy lifestyle. Check out the Nuwadi Herbals website to see all their great products. And you legendary listeners get 20% off your order when you use the promo code LEGENDS20 at checkout. Visit NuwadiHerbals.com. That's N U W A T I herbals with an s dot com and tell a friend or two about nuati herbals as well they'll thank you all right so we're in this remote section of gloucester rhode island looking for a burning beast (laughs) we are it's a strange creature that's been spotted more than once but decades apart a creature with ties not only to the town of gloucester in northwestern rhode island but also to pirates including Captain Kidd. (gasps) Captain Kidd? Oh, that's cool. I know. So we're going to have to make two stops back in time to figure this out. First, let's head to the winter of 1896. It's early February of 1896, and Gloucester local Neil Hopkins is walking home after a day's work on Dandelion Hill. As he approaches a dark section of the road, a loud noise grabs his attention. He hears some kind of large animal lurking nearby in the woods. He snaps his head to look and sees something he'll never forget. Hopkins explains. It was as big as an elephant. It seemed to be all afire. It had a hot breath. There was a metallic sound like the clanking of steel against steel. The the beast didn't seem to be strong in the wind, for it chased me only a short distance and then plunged off into the woods. I could hear the dead branches and twigs cracking under the heavy tramp, and I am certain the beast had no tail. So the beast had no tail? I mean, that's a strange detail. Or maybe Hopkins got a look at his backside when the beast ran into the woods. Maybe. Now, this strange encounter becomes the buzz of the town. It even makes the newspapers. Some think Neil Hopkins saw a cow. Come on. I mean, who would mistake a cow? And out here in the woods? <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. But others suggest maybe it was an escaped circus bear. All right, so a circus bear did terrorize a few local farms last fall, but he hasn't been seen since. Still, you'd think Hopkins would know what a bear looks like. His description sounds nothing like a bear. But most folks in town think Hopkins saw the infamous burning beast of Gloucester. Their memories drift back to a story they heard from just over half a century ago from a local pirate named Albert Hicks, who went searching for the buried treasure of Captain Kidd on a Gloucester farm. All right, so let's head back again, this time to 1838. It's the summer of 1838, and 18-year-old Albert W. Hicks is back in his old stomping grounds of Foster, Rhode Island. A little background on Hicks. He's the second youngest of seven sons. Headstrong and scrappy, he never attended school, 
He worked on his father's farm instead, where he quickly learned that the working life didn't suit him. At age 15, he ran off to Norwich, Connecticut, and began his life of crime. Hicks is obsessed with pirates and highwaymen. He sees himself as a burgeoning buccaneer. 1838 is about a century too late from the golden age of pirates. Still, the stories survive and inspire young Hicks. The stories and the treasure. There are plenty of tales of buried pirate treasure all over New England. You just need to know where to look. Still, the would-be pirate does find plenty of trouble in Connecticut. He's soon arrested and put in jail for theft. The only thing that suits Hicks less than work is jail. (laughs) I mean, he's still a kid. Being locked in makes him a little stir-crazy. Being scrappy and clever, he manages to escape for a bit. Until he's captured and jailed again. Okay, so back to the summer of 1838. Hicks has returned home to Foster, Rhode Island to regroup. Since childhood, he's heard stories of buried pirate treasure nearby. But then, one day, he overhears a local whispering that a few Spanish doubloons were unearthed recently over at the Page Farm in Gloucester. Albert Hicks is excited. He's heard some of Captain Kidd's loot was buried near here. And if doubloons were discovered, that has to be it. Captain William Kidd made a fortune off the coast of Madagascar. Like many pirates, he started as a privateer. During the King William's War in the late 1600s, Captain Kidd plundered French vessels off the coast of northern New England. The guy amassed a fortune, but most of it has been buried and presumed lost. However, Kidd had a close friend in Rhode Island, the pirate Thomas Paine. When Captain Kidd was on the run, he anchored in Jamestown, Rhode Island, and asked Payne to help him hide some of his bounty because the authorities were closing in. That treasure could be anywhere in Rhode Island or split up into multiple locations. So acting on that lead of Spanish doubloons on the page farm, Albert Hicks gathers a crew. There's John Jepp, Ben Cobb, and Ben Saunders, all from Gloucester. They wait for night to fall. They sneak onto the page farm with picks and shovels and start digging for treasure. The young men are digging near some turned over dirt. Hicks assumes this must be where those doubloons were discovered. The other boys may have their doubts, but gold fever and trespassing can cloud your better judgment sometimes. The group are so focused on their digging, they hardly notice a strange noise approaching. But then, the crew see something unlike anything they've ever seen before. They run for it. Albert Hicks describes what they saw. It was a large animal with staring eyes as big as pewter bowls. The eyes looked like balls of fire. When it breathed as it went by, flames came out of its mouth and nostrils, scorching the brush in its path. It was as big as a cow, with dark wings on each side like a bat's. It had spiral horns like a ram's, as big around as a stovepipe. Its feet were formed like ducks and measured a foot and a half across. The body was covered with scales as big as clamshells, which made a rattling noise as the beast moved along. The scales flapped up and down. The thing had lights on its sides, like those shining through a tin lantern. The story spreads around town about this strange dragon-like creature that lurks near the Providence Turnpike. Others claim they've seen it too. And a legend is born. And that brings us back to today. Fun fact. Well, not fun for Albert W. (laughs) Hicks, but Hicks was one of the last people executed for piracy in the United States. He was hanged July 13th, 1860 in New York. Now, many argue that piracy didn't end so much as it got a new label. Historians view Hicks as this crossover person. Before him, there were pirates. And after him, we'd call his type gangsters or mobsters. I mean, potato, potato, right? I could see that. Organized crime didn't end with pirates. It just got more organized. (laughs) Still, this creature, this burning beast of Gloucester, what a strange description. I know, right? I mean, it sounds almost like a dragon. Yeah. Fire-breathing, huge, covered in some kind of armor, metallic sounds. I can't imagine anyone was building robots in the (laughs) mid-1800s. No, they weren't. And so strange that a creature by such a similar description 
shows up in the same place 58 years apart. Well, let's talk about the buried treasure that Hicks was looking for. Yeah, okay. Now, is there any evidence it was buried on the page farm? So not much that I could find other than the rumors of gold doubloons. Here's the other thing. Captain Kidd did visit Rhode Island and his friend Thomas Paine in the late 1690s. And in a letter written by Captain Kidd's wife to Thomas Paine, she asked him to deliver some gold to a man to help with her husband's legal defense. Which kind of implies Paine had some of Captain Kidd's gold to share. Exactly. So once Captain Kidd is executed for piracy in 1701, well, I can't imagine Rhode Island pirate Thomas Paine was too concerned with returning the treasure to anyone. So maybe Thomas Paine kept whatever there was, or maybe he buried some of it should Kidd's crew come looking for it. That's all we got. It's not much, but the bigger issue here is this strange creature described by two different people decades apart. Yeah, over the years, we've covered a lot of strange monsters, but nothing that sounds anything like this one. When we hear about a monster like this, we try our best to fit it into the context of the time and the location, but this one doesn't fit. And maybe that's part of the charm. I mean, it sticks out. Legends have a way of doing that. And considering these two sightings were almost 60 years apart, we can't help but wonder... If maybe the next sighting could happen today. And now I'm looking over my shoulder here in Gloucester, Rhode Island. <laughs> That's the power of a legend. And you know who powers us, Ray? Our Patreon patrons. That's right. For just three bucks per month, they get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. We're not backed by some big podcast network. We count on our sponsor and our patrons to make all of this happen. Please join our inner circle by heading over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. Thank you to Dylan J. Schlender of the Reels of Justice podcast, and thanks to John Bashford, both of them, for lending their voice acting talents this week. And our theme music is by John Judd. Hey, so we're trying something new this week. Uh, Ray and I thought maybe a little... Legend post game. Well, on the script it says alternate banter here, so we will be bantering, I assume. Wow, <laughs> you just broke very the, literal. <laughs> Sorry, broke the fourth wall well, right that's now. That's what we do. That's what we do. Right, and if you're a Patreon patron, then you know that this is what we do every couple weeks, where we right. just kind of talk, and chat, dive a little deeper. Yeah, so let's dive into this uh, story about the burning beast of Gloucester. So, um, Matt, not Massachusetts, by the way, Rhode Island, Gloucester, Rhode Island, yeah. right? Now, uh, for a long time, we've covered many pirate treasure stories over and, the years. Monster stories and, and monster stories and yeah. monster stories. Uh, we are a sucker for, for buried <laughs> I pirate. love pirates, yeah. yeah, pirates, pirate treasure. Like, we can't help ourselves. I you rem- know, I couldn't see myself as a pirate, no, if I but I could see myself wanting to be a pirate like this guy. I you saw I mean? myself as the guy that wanted to find the treasure. Okay, I can my do whole that. Life, my whole yeah. life. While yeah. they're out to sea, right. we're running around the right. land looking for the treasure. <laughs> do you see the X ray? It's <laughs> no, it's over here. Here's the X. Right. So I remember being a kid, and I heard if you uh, count ten paces and dig, <laughs> you'll find treasure. Yes. And then so we did. We start. We counted ten paces and started digging. And um, I think even my kid logic back then went. Well, really, any spot on Earth is 10 paces from somewhere, <laughs> right? Like, right. You know, wherever you're standing right now uh, is 10 paces from somewhere. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> so but we dug because you, you, and I remember once we found this, like, like you, know, you find like a soda can or something sure. from like decades ago. Which at that age, that's a buried treasure. It was indeed a buried treasure. But that whole notion, that Indiana Jones idea, right? That we're going to, we're going to go looking, we're going to find something, we're going to get rich. Mm. Like, we're going to, this morning, we're not rich. By dinner time, we will be. You know, <laughs> I love that idea that we could we go looking for something because because we heard a story. We heard a story that was true enough. We were willing to sweat all day for it. And that soda can is worth at least five cents. So <laughs> right, once you clean the dirt out of it, sure, <laughs> it's a nickel. So if you did that all day, every day, and you made five cents a day, um, then you could certainly carry on. But so so I get Hicks looking for this treasure. And then part of me was wondering, okay, but then this beast shows up. And he talks about like scales, like a, like clamshells. Mm. And, you know, I, I mean, that's it's so descriptive. Fire breathing. Both descriptions. Fire breathing? Like that's a dragon. Right. Right? And, and with the clamshells, it reminds me of maybe, maybe some kind of sea creature. So a mix of a dragon and Nell, Nelly or something. Right. But the problem is that Gloucester's a pretty good ways from the ocean. Right, Gloucester's way inland. Like you're, you're on the Connecticut border. You know, you're not on right. the coast. Right, 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 right. So this, if we were on the coast, you could say, all right, sea creature. But I mean, no. I mean, this thing unless is, it traveled uh, inland, and nobody saw. Like, 
like along the whole Providence Turnpike, right? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, that's what, 20, 30 miles, right? Of, of uh, just don't mind me, you know? So perhaps there are dragons, maybe. Uh, in Rhode Island. Yeah. And, and as, as or Hicks, seen in Rhode Island, but maybe elsewhere as well. This wasn't a very stealth dragon. Hicks that's described him as big as an elephant. Big as an elephant, right? Like that's... That sounds like a small dragon, if <laughs> I can... <laughs> right. Recall my folklore on dragons. But They're how, a little bigger. How do you miss an elephant in February well, yeah. in Rhode Island? With scales With and fire, fire breathing, breathing yeah. and lights yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't match anything that we've really covered before. No. And there were two accounts of this. Two. As you heard when you were yeah. listening to the podcast. Six, almost 60 years apart. Yeah. Um, because when the second one happened, it was like the old timers that went like, oh, remember that, that pirate kid around here that he saw something weird. And, uh, we got a lot of this information on this week's article from a Boston Globe article from, f- that had the Hicks a- a- account from the 1800s. Mm. And that's the account that, that basically gave us the quote from, um, from, Hi- uh, fr- I'm sorry, fr- uh, Hicks was the, um, pirate. It was, yes. it was the, um. The other guy, okay, Neil Hopkins. Neil Hopkins' account uh, was was the second one, and so Hopkins' account had his description, and then they pulled um, the pirate Hicks's account from his his confessions and and biography uh, mm. that was that was written right before he was executed. So, you know, it's so interesting to me that h- how these two stories sort of connect, um, but I've I really haven't heard of anything in modern times. Anyone seeing this creature? Well, we don't see a lot of that in general. We hear these legends, but nobody yep. has seen them in the last 50 years or so. But it was a regular occurrence 100, 200 years ago, which makes it easier to tell the story and put some fact behind it. But it did happen 200 years ago. Well, how can you prove that? My great-great-grandfather said so. Right, and it was in the but Boston But where is it Globe. now? Right, it well, was, yeah, it, it was Globe. mentioned. So. Yeah, it, it, so it got some ink in the paper and things like that. But so Bigfoot sightings that we do have modern day accounts, right? Even in Massachusetts, mm-hmm. some of the stories we've covered of Bigfoot and, you know, the the, um, the firsthand accounts go back just 10 years or 20 years or whatever. So uh, so certain creatures are more sort of acceptable to talk about. But like like Bigfoot, you can say like, well, tons of people have seen Bigfoot, but a scaly dragon brought <laughs> breathing fire in Rhode Island? Right. That, not well, so much. I think it's a little bit more plausible that there is a hairy ape-like creature that we just haven't discovered yet that is a little smarter than your average bear right. um, that can hide and, and elude uh, the man. <laughs> Human, you know what I mean? Yeah, humans, yeah. I, I get it, and I think that's, um, I don't know. But but I, I loved this story because it just sticks out. And I guess part of me hopes, you know, as we put this out, you know, people are, are listening to us, that maybe someone's out there saying, uh, my dad told me about an encounter with something weird that sort of sounds like this. Or And then suddenly you get another data point. You get another piece of information where maybe you know, people are out there that have never even heard this story. Or maybe they saw it. Maybe they saw it. They're afraid to say something. You can. Come forward. We're here for you. Yeah. this is We love this. We'll is protect the best you. Part. The, our, our super secret Facebook group full of people yeah. sharing these kinds of stories and accounts and tales. And, and, uh, and I think that's one of the many things we love about this is the way... We connect with our communities, with our history, with each other. That's why we do what we do. And we do love our tales about monsters, so that was a good one this week. Absolutely. So, hey, until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think.